Today we're going to be finding extreme values of the functions and where they occur. And you kind of have to know a little bit about what we talked about yesterday and a little bit about functions for this lesson. So finding the extreme values. Notice how yesterday we had an interval, today we don't have an interval. I have no domain restrictions on this function since we're at a polynomial, but I know that an x cubed graph should look something like that. So I might have a max and a min, and those are both local. So I find my first derivative. And I set my first derivative equal to zero to find my critical points. So it looks like my critical point is, is one. So I find the function value at that number, find that function value, that function value is negative one. Now I only had one critical point, but looking at what I'm guessing my graph looks like, looks like I might have two. So let's look at what happens a little bit less than our function value. So let's find f of zero and f of two, a number a little bit more. So I can get an idea of what our graph looks like. I'm going to draw a little grid over here because I want to get an idea of what the graph looks like. This was at x equals 1. That's the only time our function value was equal, our derivative was equal to 0. So I know that that's a critical point, or I like to call it an interesting point. So f of 1 is negative 1. When I plug in 0, we get negative 2. And when we get 2, when we plug in 2, we get 0. So what happens is I bet you our graph is increasing, increasing, increasing. Goes stationary for a little bit. Slope of my tangent line goes to 0, and then increasing, increasing again. I drew a bad picture there, but if you graph it on your calculator, what happens is it looks something like that. Goes to 0, and then goes back to increasing. And it's going to be super clear to you guys in a few days that my derivative here, f prime of x, is always greater than zero. So my function is always increasing. So even though I got a critical point, we have no extreme values. So we have no absolute max or min or even no local max or min. Okay, the next one. This one's a little bit more challenging because we have this deriv we have this function which I am going to make that equal to four x squared minus nine to the negative one-third power. Now by doing that, that just makes our derivative a little bit easier to find. So I find my derivative, I get negative one-third times four x squared minus nine. I reduce that exponent by one, so I get negative four-thirds times by the derivative of the inside, which is eight x. Simplifying that out. Trust me, it's going to make your life easy if you simplify out at this point. Negative 8x on the top. On the bottom, I have 3 times by 4x squared minus 9 to the 4 thirds power. Now let's look at this. And let's even look at domain restrictions of our original function. Our original function domain restrictions. We know that the bottom can't equal zero. So I know x cannot be equal to positive and negative three halves. If you look at that, that's when also our derivative is undefined. So I know that those are going to be critical points. So part of our critical points are positive and negative three halves. And then another part of our critical point is when this function equals zero, that's when the top can equal zero. 
so we get x equals 0. Okay, now since the critical points here are also not in our domain, we can't check those because there's nothing, when I plug in I get 1 over 0. So what I have to do is I have to check x equals 0. So I find f of 0. When I plug in 0, I get 1 over the cube root of negative 9, which that ends up being, in my calculator, negative 0.481. So again, I need to know what's happening around this point, because that was my only critical point. So now I need to do... I need to know, is this value here, is this a max or a min? So I'm going to find f of 1, because that's probably the next easiest for me to find. When I find f of 1, I get 1 over the cube root of negative 5. And even if I find f of negative 1, we get that same thing. So both of those are equal to negative 0.585. So which one is bigger? I go from a negative 0.85 on my graph at I go from a negative 0.85 to a 0.48 then back but it looks something like that this value here is going to be a relative maximum value. Okay. And for this one we have no absolute max or mins. Our next one, a piecewise function, always a fun one. So find the critical points to determine the local extreme values. First you want to determine are we continuous at 1. So basically, let's look at, as I go to 1 from numbers a little bit less, numbers a little bit less, I use my top function. I have 4 minus 3, which is 1. Numbers a little bit more. Um, we have of that function, when I plug in 1, I have 2 minus 1, which is 1. f of 1 is equal to 1, so we are continuous. So I know I don't have any breaking points. Now I'm going to look at our derivative. So I take the derivative of each function. I take the derivative of our top function. Take the derivative of the bottom function. Okay, so our critical points. And I'm going to make a little chart. Our critical points. X, when does the derivative equal 0? Well, the bottom function, we never get our derivative to equal 0. The top function, negative 6x equals 0, when x equals 0, and that's in that domain, so one of our critical points is x equals 0. Another one of our critical points is that breaking point, because technically the derivative from the left, numbers a little bit less, doesn't equal the derivative from the right, so that's undefined. Now we find the derivative at each one of those points, 0 and undefined. That was kind of our analyzation. Then we find the f of x value. So finding my function value at 0, I use the bottom, the top function, I get 4. And also I use the top function for 1. And then extreme. Now, honestly, I need a little bit of a graph to figure out my extreme values. I know at 1, my function value is 1. 
I know I'm going to have some sort of parabola for numbers less than or equal to 1. And I know for numbers a little bit more, I'm going to have a positive sloping line. So where's my extreme value? We have no absolute maximum or minimum since our function goes infinitely down and infinitely up. But what I do have is I do have here a local max at x equals 0. And at x equals 1, that's going to be a local min. So again, honestly, sometimes graphing these is going to help you guys find them. I still want the analyzation of the derivative because that's going to be important to us. But looking at a graph for now is super helpful. Okay, our next one. Our next example, this one also slightly challenging because you have to think of your domain restrictions for this function. Your domain restriction for that is negative 8 to 8. If you were to plug in 9, you'll get 64 minus 81. That's going to be a negative number. I can't square root a negative number. So these are going to be essentially endpoints that we're going to find. Okay, let's find our derivative and find our critical points. Um, we have a product rule. And then now we have a chain rule. And so I'm just taking the derivative of the outside function. Then the derivative of the inside function is negative 2x. Now again, it's going to make your life easy if you simplify. I didn't have you guys simplifying earlier. It's going to make your life easy. So now I have a 5, a negative 5x squared on the top. The 1 half and the 2 cancel. On the bottom, we have the square root of 64 minus x squared. Now to get Now I need to get a common denominator. So I multiply this first term by square root of 64 over square root of 64. So I have 5 times 64 minus x squared because square root times the square root is going to get me back to that value minus 5x squared all over the square root of 64 minus x squared. Okay, critical points when the bottom equals 0. The bottom equals 0, well, that's our domain restriction, so we're going to be plugging in those values. Now let's simplify the top. Simplifying the top, when I simplify the top, we get 320 minus 10x squared. Now doing my algebra, x is going to be equal to plus or minus root 32 or plus or minus 4 root 2. So then, again, set up that chart. Or what you could do is you could just find f of negative 8. f of negative 4 root 2 f of 4 root 2 and f of 8 because those these were the endpoints of our domain and these 4 root 2 were our critical points okay so our function value when I plug in negative 8 and positive 8 that's going to make this radical be 0 0 times anything is going to get me back to 0 when I plug in Um, negative 4 root 2, I get negative 160. When I plug in positive, I get positive 160. So, this is going to be a minimum value. Now notice, from negative 8, from 0, this is going to be a max since it was higher 
than the number that was less than it. So I go from 0 to negative 160. Then I go from 160 to negative 160 to positive 160. So positive 160 has to be a max. Then I go back to 0, which is going to be a min. Now, again, I would need to look at a graph to determine whether they're absolute maximums or minimums. But as long as you're recognizing and getting your derivative equal to 0 and getting these values, I'm happy. Okay, that's it for today. Please make sure that your lesson summary is submitted on time.